Hi guys, this is DJ. Welcome to the Great Indian Rooftop Garden channel. I have promised a video on IFI and I have recorded it five times. Every time I kept on rambling, so I am trying this the sixth time. This time I will try to make it very concise and uh, precise. Now I have got lots of aphids in my garden, lots and lots of aphids. My amaranth has aphids, lots of bean plants. There are aphids all around. But in my garden, to control aphids, there are beneficial insects, natural beneficial insects like uh, ladybirds, lady beetles. I've got lady beetles and lady beetle larvae in my garden. I mean, hundreds of them. Last week there were a few. Uh, I took some shots of that. Now this week. Yesterday when I was harvesting amaranth, I have got just loads of lady beetle larvae eating up aphids as they were starting to develop on amaranth. My amaranth, yeah, I did lose a bit of amaranth for aphids. You know, the tips had some of the uh, amaranth plants tips had aphids. I lost, uh, say, some 40-50 grams of amaranth. But I got from my amaranth bed back there, I got 450 grams of amaranth once again yesterday, I harvested it yesterday. Now, I've got natural beneficial insects because of the way I garden. I don't really uh, spray anything unless it is absolutely required. Uh, I work with nature, it's a permaculture principle. I work with nature, not against it. And unless it's absolutely necessary, I don't spray anything. I don't do much in the garden in terms of uh, attacking nature. When there are aphids, I just waited lady beetles arrived they started eating that's the way i garden now if you want to control aphids there are other techniques uh, one is to spray them off with water just spray take a strong spray can and start spraying it off i'll show you my uh, spraying can in a second just wait here Here it is, here it is, I have got my spraying can, what I do is I lift up leaves and uh, uh, spray aphids with water and that will make the aphids fall off the leaves and when they are on the ground that's when you go ahead and spray some neem oil or uh, tobacco water. How do you make tobacco water, how do you make uh, uh, neem oil spray, just take some neem oil, it's available in stores take uh, uh, just a few drops I, I go with a high dilution of uh, neem oil just take a few drops of neem oil for a liter of water shake the bottle well put it in a spray can and start spraying your plants and your ground with uh, uh, the neem oil or you can do you know how do you do tobacco water just get a cigar from outside uh, get a tobacco cigar not the flavored ones that but the but the pure uh, pure tobacco ones Take a big cigar, cut it into three pieces. One piece, one small piece, you put it in a bottle, pour some water in it, shake the bottle very well, let it sit for an hour, and then spray the soil and the plants like that with water, yeah, with uh, tobacco water. What that does is it gives a particular smell to your plants, particular smell to your uh, soil, and uh, that is unappetizing for many, many insects. Of course, when you start doing that, a lot of times, beneficial insects will also not arrive. The rooftop garden is, is something that will go on for a long, long time. Uh, you don't know, you're not setting up a garden just for four months, you're not setting up a garden just for one crop. It's not an annual monocrop at all. Uh, if you are a monocropping, even if you are spraying organic stuff, just like organic farms, uh, I don't think that's the right strategy to go uh, uh, with your garden. Your garden has to go a long, long time. So, for me, I let it get into a natural balance uh, by itself. It's alright if I start losing some plants. It is totally alright if I start getting some pests. I'll wait uh, for beneficial insects uh, to start arriving. As long as it's not affecting my productivity, I really don't spray stuff. I just uh, let it go all natural. Usually, I don't lose much productivity. Yeah, there are effects. I lose a couple of plants maybe. A couple of plants don't produce. But if one bean plant is not doing, a jack bean is doing great, that one does not have any aphids. Jack bean, uh, tamma in Telugu is not having any aphids. My other bean plants have aphids, that's alright. 
uh, here is a kale, bed of kale that I harvested yesterday and here is a bean plant. Here is a bean plant. Sorry if I am appearing dark, but uh, it's a subject that's more important. This bean plant has aphids. It has been attacked with aphids. It was so full of aphids, you can see all the leaves getting crumpled up. But my lady beetles arrived, ate them up, now I look at it, hardly any, any aphids left. I, I, I myself am I'm surprised, there are a few aphids, but not too many. That said, you can look at the tip of this, there are aphids here, but it's growing. It does grow, it's a bit slow, it looks a bit uh, sick. There are aphids on the plant here, just uh, to show you I'm spraying, usually I don't even spray with water. Usually I don't spray with water, but just to show you, I, I showed you, just to show you I sprayed with water now. The aphids are gone and the plant is growing, so as long as things are working like that, I don't spray anything. But if, uh, you know, if you really want to control aphids, use water to wash your plants, then uh, spray some neem oil dilute on the ground or tobacco on the ground. You can also use garlic, just get a clo few cloves of garlic, smash them up, put them in a liter of water overnight, then take that water and start spraying. That will also give a nice aroma to your plants, a garlic smell to your plants, which is uh, unappetizing. More, many aphids will not start getting back onto your plants. Some people suggest adding a little bit of soap to your garlic water or neem oil mix to help that neem oil stick on to uh, the plants and aphids. Uh, it's not a bad idea, get an organic soap if you want. Mm, but, but do not make spraying your first choice. Uh, just think about it slowly, try to get things in balance, if you are losing say out of uh, 20 palak plant, 20 spinach plants, uh, if cutworms are eating a few, all you have to do is take a stick and remove the cutworms manually and that's about it. If you have aphids, it's alright, they are there on some plants, let the other plants thrive, wait and see, allow beneficial insects to come, that's how I garden here, that's how this great Indian rooftop garden works. So this is my short and sweet video on aphid control. If you have any doubts on how to do these things, please do ask. I'll demonstrate for you how to spray, how uh, to use tobacco water or something else. Generally, I don't prefer to do that in my garden. I allow nature to take care of its course. That's about aphids. The previous ones, videos I recorded were more like permaculture classes rather than uh, a short YouTube video. So I am redoing it. Again, I went into a little bit of rant here regarding natural uh, ways. I hope it is useful. I hope it inspires you to go do gardening in a more natural way. Uh, it's not difficult to do it that way. Just don't panic when you see any insects. Most of them are not poisonous. Yeah, you'll lose a couple of plants. That's it. If you have any valuable plant, uh, say you have planted only four tomatoes and they are getting affected, yeah, maybe spray just that tomato plant. Just go, take it slowly. Work with nature, not against it. That's the way permaculture works, that's the way natural gardening works. Do not rush for any kind of sprays, even organic ones. With that advice, DJ signing off. Thanks for watching the Great Indian Rooftop Garden channel. Subscribe, like and share this with your friends if you find this useful. DJ signing off.